Guys, I am here with an icon today. I'm here with Debbie Rashan. She is a horror film icon, a traumatic icon, and I am now pleased to say she is also going to be in this year's World Film Geek Hall of Fame. And it is an absolute pleasure to be talking with her today as part of our Ladies of Film interview series. So, Debbie, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And I'm extremely honored to be in the Hall of Fame. You are amazing and it's a huge honor. So thank you. So my first question for you is, where did yeah. you get bit by the acting bug? When did this all start for you? Well, uh, most people probably know it, but maybe not your audience. Um, when I was a preteen, I was, when I was homeless on the street, I fell into um, a background role. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous stains. Lou Adler was the director. It had like the Clash, uh, some of the Sex Pistols, um, all this kind of stuff. Diane Lane, Laura Dern, a uh, big production, um, Paramount movie. I was on it for about three months as a background person. I was pay. I really had my hair like dyed and bleached to be, you know, in the role. Um, and uh, yeah, I was paid like 300 cash a week. So that was a lot of money to me back then and and the situation, of course. Um, and so I decided, well, this is like something that I really want to do. It gave me a purpose. You know, I was just a street kid. So it gave me purpose. And so all of the books I started reading um, they were all written by um, teachers that were teaching in New York City. So it made no sense to me to go to L.A. where they make movies. It made more sense for me to go to New York because I needed to study. So I went to New York. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm from New York originally, too. So yeah. I was just going there around that time as well. So I know how that yeah. is. Mm -hmm. But I've seen some of your work. And, um, you know, one I remember first time I saw you was actually a photo of you when you did a 1995 film called abducted to the reunion and right. actually and the article actually featured your co-star of the film Donna Jason um because there was it was a martial arts magazine and she was a I wrote magazine. that yeah did you know that? I do that yeah now that I think about it yes you did write that and I'm like yes I actually had that I had that issue of matches of kung fu or inside kung, I can't remember what, I think it's matches of kung fu I actually yeah had that issue because i was like that was during my whole totally into horror and martial arts you know i'm still am in the both genres but yeah. reading that article and getting to know like more about donna because i saw her in honor and glory just before yes. that and yes. you know so my experience and this is one of your first lead roles actually if i remember if i remember right this was like one of your first major like you were like co-leading this what yes, was that? that is absolutely correct. Yeah, it was. It was shot in um, uh, February 94. That's when it was made. And then, yeah, it probably came out like uh, within a year later, as they do. Um, but, oh, it's so funny that you bring that up because, first of all, I never really knew, um, besides people who were into the martial arts, that anybody actually saw it or read it. And I had just spoken about it like for the first time and that's my kitty. So any noises <laughs> you hear, it's just my little kitty Woody <laughs> being himself. What can I do? Um, so I told her I was so impressed with her as a person and a performer and um, and uh, a Kung Fu um, artist, uh, Jiu Jitsu and, and all that. She had all of the, the, um, the grades, if you will. I'm not sure what you call it, the levels done. Yeah. And so I told her I really wanted to do something for her, but not something necessarily for the movie's not really horror. It's right. more action. That's so right. I said, well, let me let me see if I can get this done. And so I contacted the magazine and they were like, yeah, absolutely, because they knew who she was. Um, but recently, what I was saying is there's a new documentary called um, American Expendables, and it's all about North American pictures. And uh, I kind of tell a little bit of the story, but it's really more about um, Cynthia Rothrock because she's one of the big stars yeah. like Tiger Claws and all those great films that, that she stars in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I bring all that back to say it's funny that you bring that up because... <laughs> 
I just spoke about that probably for the first time in it in a couple of decades. So that that's pretty cool. Yeah. And what was that experience like to do that type of movie compared to what we're used to? You know, everyone's used to you being hard, you know, this horror queen, but what was it like shooting this action thriller? What was that like? It was it was pretty cool. Even before I got there, it was pretty cool because um, I didn't have a license to drive, let alone a license to kill. Um, <laughs> and so I had to in New York in a snowstorm. I got my uh, learner's permit and then also I was learning how to drive. I never got an actual driver's license, but I was able to legally drive in the movie if I had a permit. And there was other people in the car with a license. So I had that. And I was driving in New York City, like, you know, east side, lower east side, all that kind of stuff in the snow, in the craziness of New York. And so mm -hmm. um, when I got up there, of course, I always end up having the characters that drive. And I don't know why <laughs> I'm probably the only one of all cast and crew that doesn't drive. So I always think that's funny. And so I always, you know, do it um and so i remember just really quick about that um getting on the set and i was uh i drive up to the gas station and and the park in various places and um i literally said to donna and raquel who were in the car with me when we were coming up to the gas station i said and i meant it i said is left break or right because i just had a split second of forgetting like just a moment we're doing the scene it's like one of the first things i'm shooting so my mind's all over the place and i just said real quick guys <laughs> and I thought, oh my god and they really thought i was joking they said the answer but they laughed like i was joking i was thinking well thank god they they think i'm joking but i would do things that were made it really obvious like uh, when we're parking or something, I wouldn't um, turn it off the right way so that it would beep. It would go ding, 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 yeah. ding. And I was just like, man, just walk away. And I thought, well, they'll take that out in post. But they never did. <laughs> so even funnier, if you're ever able to find the movie to see it, did come out. It played on uh, TV forever in 95 only. Um, and then it went to DVD and uh, you know it's I've been out of print and i don't know where you would ever find to to watch it yeah. it's a very unusual film it's not a horror film it's not an amazing action movie it's just sort of an oddity you know if you like strange movies then... well, which i do i love i live for uh rare out of print b movies i like mm -hmm. i'm a total uh, sucker for those like yeah it's because like, oh, for me, for, yeah, for me, it's more, they're more original than, you know, these oh. big blockbusters are like, they, they're, it's much more originality than like what you expect. Cause that's, and that's what I like. I like, that's why I like indie films more than like the big Hollywood films. Cause the big Hollywood right. films, they just recycle and reuse or remake. And, you know, yeah. at least if with indie films, if they were to remake something, at least they can change it up somehow. Like they kind of make it their, somehow make it their own remakes yes. in a way it works like with yeah. trauma you know them remaking mm -hmm. class of nukem high basically into a two-part epic and you know changing up like so much of it and that's and i actually loved seeing that so oh know. yeah no they and and it's interesting because you know with the toxic avenger remake with all those major stars that are great actors um, I'm not really sure where it is. And that's the weird and funny thing. I mean, uh, it, I think it's streaming on Peacock, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. And uh, so uh, just yeah. one I know that I know the original, I know the original was, and also the original class Nuka Mai. And that was my first trauma movie, actually class Nuka Mai. That was my very first trauma film. And then I did see Tromeo and Juliet about a decade ago. Finally, I finally got to see that. I know that you were in that. And that was yep. one of your first trauma films. What was that like working with, you know, Lloyd Kaufman, the, the legend Lloyd Kaufman, yes. who's, also, who's also in the Hall of Fame this year. So like, I got to mention that. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's perfect. No, um, I'd worked with Lloyd for a couple of years prior. So I knew him. We did the trauma system 
And it was, we did a, a number of things like, um, you know, the uh, bumpers in between movies, say Germany, all cable channels were still relatively new. Mm -hmm. So they would always go to places like Troma and just take their catalog until they had their feet in the ground and they could pay big companies for big titles. But they would always sort of use, if you will, places like Troma to fill the time. But what they would want to do, too, is have sort of bumpers in between the movies. So we would uh, do the sketches for like Germany or UK or whatever country, even, you know, America, of course. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think so, it was yeah, um, USA Up All Night. They, they did the little bumpers at times when they, we yeah. had that show. That's right. And it was just like that. So so I had done those and a number of uh, live appearances and box art and all this kind of stuff. So when he handed me the script for Tromeo and Juliet, he's like, read it and see if there's anything that, you know, you like and you want to try for. And so I remember the first iteration of it and James Gunn hadn't started working in the office there yet. So he sort of like revamped the whole thing. But so that's how I came to know that Lloyd was doing it. Then once we were shooting it, it was really um, a, quite an excellent experience. And the reason is everybody in the movie, and this is because of James as much as Lloyd, both of them, but certainly James, um, they went for a different kind of actor, I, I find than Troma had been using. Troma were using uh, fun actors, you know, people with a lot of personality, you know, really, you know, yeah. good folks. But I think with this one, they really wanted to go with actor actors, even though the subject matter may be silly, outrageous, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, and they really had them. They had a lot of like good damn actors in that, you know. Yeah. Just, you know, when you think about it, and I unfortunately can't remember everybody's name right now, but the the fellow who was obsessed with Juliet and he worked at, owned the meat market, he was like a modern day Jerry Lewis. I mean, wow. he was absolutely, everybody was great. So that it was a good experience because of that it was really, it was fun and you know, you started to see, which you don't see so much, like when you're doing little things, but you get to see, like, get to know Lloyd better, like how he is on a set and, and how he directs and all that kind of stuff. So it was, um, yeah, it was good. Yeah. And then, of course, a few years later, we got firsthand look at how he does it with um, Apocalypse Soon, when the making of Citizen yeah. Toxie. And, I, you know, of course, I've seen the movie and no, it's funny enough you were unrecognizable as Ms. Wiener. Like, I couldn't even know, I didn't, like, I, I'm telling credits, I didn't realize that was you. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, you were, you totally looked completely different. So, yeah, kudos on that, because I like when people alter their looks for a role, and they look like, when it's, when they're in costume, they don't look the same. That It just yeah. brings out more of the, even though you're, you had a, a bit role in it, but even yeah. still, it was more, you were unrecognizable. And, yeah but seeing how the set was and how chaotic it was as well and i think i remember you saying at one point where everyone got drunk the night before they were supposed to shoot like a school scene you mm. you were out there saying don't drink and make movies <laughs> like when they were putting in the makeup <laughs> yeah. Was... Yeah. <laughs> but that's the truth i mean you know, with it, I've always said, you know, Lloyd is the best person if you're coming up in film and you really want to learn how, you know, you're not going to decide to spend your life to be an indie artist, like true indie, where there's maybe at the most 10 crew and your cast, right? Like that's a whole yeah. different thing. But if you want to learn the structure of the film set, with the departments and what everything means and and the workings of, of every element of it. And you want to sort of be hired in a grade higher than what you're really ready for, like the head of a department or something, trauma is, is the place to go because he will hire people that are very talented and promising and put them in positions that are much higher than what they're 
quote, ready for, by the end of the movie, they are ready for it. They have learned everything. The other side is that they're very young, which is great. You know, it's awesome to have that energy and creativity. But with that comes all the other stuff. And also with Lloyd, he's hiring people. He's giving them a chance. It's it's unparalleled. You're not going to find that anywhere else anymore. Maybe with Corman or places that don't exist anymore. Yeah. Um, but the other side of it, too, is that you'll see him, as you do in the documentaries, get frustrated. But he's frustrated because people may not know how to do something because he's hired them for something that's sort of over their head in the beginning, you know, right. in the beginning. And then so it's it's a two ed two sided sword, I guess that you would say. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, nothing like the experience. If you can everybody who's gone through it says the same thing. If I survive this, I can survive any set. And it is true. And how often, you know, do you get that experience? And look how many people came out of Toronto, like got their start at Toronto that are huge now, not just James Gunn. Right. Oliver Stone was in one of the very first trauma films. Vincent D'Onofrio yep. actually was in a trauma film. Amazing I mean, actor. It, Billy Bob Thornton was in a was in a trauma film. Chopper Chicks and Zombies. Samuel Jackson. Samuel, Samuel Jackson. Jackson. Death by Temptation. I mean, mm -hmm. it just you, you imagine all these big players now, and you, you don't think about they got their start at this little indie New York City company, and they blew up they, they got their start and they got to learn it and you know that's what makes it more amazing when you hear those stories about the ones who succeeded it just is amazing and the fact that uh, Lloyd for the longest time <clears throat> his joke was you know Madonna came by you know half a dozen times begging for a role in the first turn on and they you know he and Michael Hers both kept turning her down they you know she would read for the role and she would come dressed you know in the cut off short 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 jeans like in the character i mean yeah. um and but no but what <laughs> she wasn't famous yet they had no idea what she was and they were like no no that that's not it and uh of course you can well imagine lloyd um you know kicking himself for many 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 years to come <laughs> You know, when she was on the cover of Time and everything else. Yeah. So, I imagine. Yeah. But uh, it's 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 a funny story. It's a funny story. So what are your other favorite horror films that what would you consider like your favorite horror films that you worked on that are not related to trauma, if any? Um, well, there's so many. I mean, <clears throat> we'll have to see what happens because things can change and happen yeah. and who knows what is going to happen. But I can say just in a vague way that probably I'll put it in these terms, because, again, until something's happening, it's not happening. I got, I, I got an idea. Let's do a top five of today. What would you if you were to choose five today? Do you know? Do you know oh, no. But I was I was going to say just yeah. first, I just want to, like, let yeah. this, you know, breaking yeah. news thing. Um, Lloyd is likely to do a film this year, and I'm very likely to be one of the leads. But we'll just leave it like that because we'll keep that a secret. We'll keep that a keep that a secret. Well, it's not a secret so much as you know, like I say, you no know, things happen. Like you know, it could change to next year. It could be who knows what happens right between the the beginning process of uh, talks to this, you know, shooting the movie. Yeah. So that's but that's all positive you know it's let's not say a, uh, let's say fingers crossed we'll, we'll put it yeah that there we it, go I'm fingers telling crossed. You right now this role is insane insane and you would see me once again completely utterly transformed that's all i'm going to say but it like you said right like looking different for every kid this is another one of those like you will, it would just be, and for me, that's like, that's the stuff, right? Like that's the yeah. fun stuff, not just being another version of either you or one of the characters you've already done, but actually something, phew, nobody even knows it's you until the end. It's like, holy shit. Yep, okay, so exactly. top five movies that actually have been done. Um, uh, well, I mean, 
there's so many that I've had a great time doing. And maybe for one reason or another, they didn't completely come together. So I don't want to say that these are the only top five movies, but I think if someone were to say to me, what would be the the movies that the first five movies that you would like me to see? Yeah, there right? we go. That's, 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 that's the way to say it. That's the way to put it. Yeah. I think that's you, the you way nailed to put it. it. <laughs> yeah, because then then people could watch anything, but then at least they know, okay, what you're capable of. And yeah, you did good here, but that's that doesn't define you. Um, you know, this this, you know, really, really um super uh low budget movie which is you know great and and sometimes you do them for friends and you know for fun to help them out or whatever the case may be right so right. besides that which I you know love them uh because art is art uh, I would say color from the dark American nightmare exhumed uh I would say Mm, I really love also Wrath of the Crows. I would also say um, for something different, I would say uh, Bleed. A lot of people seem to like that as sort of a throwback. Um, and geez, that's maybe for comedy, either Dollface or... Mm, well, I'm I'm sort of staying away from the trauma movies because we already mentioned them. Right. But, but Terra Firmer, I think, is yeah. a fun character. You know, that was a really awesome character to play too. So for comedy, yeah, I would say that one as well. Well, that would another... be a good start, like a good base. Right. Yeah, there you and go. Say, oh yeah, okay, you could do the this, 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 and that. But then also all this other crazy stuff. And I got one in mind, too, that I think people should definitely check out. And it's this one right behind me. Oh, yes. There. See, there you go. Slime See? City Massacre. I freaking well, yes. loved it. I saw uh, the original add first. That. Add Slime City Massacre and add Serial Caller. Right. Add I saw, yeah. Two. I saw, I did, a, I did a double feature. I saw one day out of the blue. I was like, I'm going to watch Slime City. I get Because I'm a huge fan of Greg Lamberson. And yep. I've talked with him a couple times. Mm -hmm. And... Then I'm finally like, you know what? I'm gonna watch Slime City Massacre because not only were you in it, but mm -hmm. we both got a we both got a mutual friend in that film too, Brooke Lewis Bellas, and who's yes. also gonna be in the Hall of Fame this year. And Fantastic. phenomenal. I mean, I loved the sequel. It was so different, a little bit different than the the original, but it, yeah. I felt it was better. It was one of these rarities where I felt it was better than the original because this one had a whole war at the end of the movie, and I'm going like it blew my mind and seeing you yeah. turn into this was yes. just like well, yeah. i was just I, like i i love this and when he contacted me i was doing like fangle radio and all this stuff at that time and he contacted me and he and i was like a sequel to slime city i was just like you've got to be this is amazing of of course like this is ridiculous of course um just I was so excited to do it and it did not let me down both in experience and the final product. I was like, this is fucking it. Like, it's so cool. Yeah. Like we all got Slime City Massacre tattoos. That's how deep we were into it. We were all jacked to be there. And I will be always grateful to Greg because I love it. I love that movie. So proud of it to be yeah. in it. And I, mm -hmm. I and I love his other film, like the other films he's done as of late, especially yeah. like Guns of Eden. I like the fact that he didn't have to use real weaponry. He used yeah. he was telling me he used Walmart toy guns from Walmart to like shoot the and then the police thought and then he told me a funny story of how police were actually there thinking that they were gonna actually something was gonna happen because he saw this gathering of people with guns and he was I'm just like this is what this is indie fine filmmaking at its finest when you get the police showing up like <laughs> thinking you a bunch of guys with guns. But oh, I mean, that's yeah, gun. Yeah, that's a that's another great movie. He's so talented and versatile as a director. So, yeah, yeah, great, great guy, great friend. I have great respect for him. Love his stuff, and I've always had a good time working with him. Always. So, so aside yeah, from aside from yeah. 
Yes. So aside from Lloyd Kaufman and Greg Lamberson, who are some other favorite directors of yours that you've worked with that you can well, consider like some of your top? Um, well, always Van Zucone, because not only is he a great guy, he's fun, but he has that. He's one of one of these people that has uh, and he also is the DP. So that's sort of like a different animal when you have the director, who's also the writer, who's also the DP. So now you have somebody who has a vision and they they know exactly how they want to capture it. You know, yeah. um, and that is him. That is him. He's like one of these guys that's just like a artist, a director's director, if you will. And he he gives you freedom. At the same time, he knows exactly what he wants. And it's just phenomenal. Um, I'm just going to sort of mention, because there's, there's a lot of people that I've really, really liked to work with. John Keyes is another one. Uh, done two films with him. Uh, American Nightmare and Doom Room, which was originally called Nightmare Box um, and uh, based, inspired by a true story. Uh, he's another one. You know, all of the and there's there is a number of, of people who are just they're so good because their vision mm -hmm. and they're so excited about their vision and they just have to make this piece of, I say art and that sounds pretentious and I don't mean it that way. I mean right. that they really have something to say with their movie, you know, be it Greg, Lloyd, John, Yvonne, all different as a day is long from each other, but they all have something in common. You know, they, they have that like strong sense of what they want to say with their movies um, because they're never just movies, you know, they're multi-layered um, and that's that's what I love is just like being a part of someone's like really intense experience um, of, of creating something that that matters that much to them. Because keep in mind, I've also done an endless amount of movies that were just made for product right. and they're fun, too. I mean, don't get me wrong about a lot of fun making, you know, product movies, if you will. Um, and you can squeeze some, you know, artistry in them as well. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're really, they're really fast. They're really like slam, bam, thank you, ma'am, experience. It never goes too deep, you know. Um, and that's sort of the difference. Even uh, Jimmy Burrill. I've done uh, one movie and a few episodes of his uh, Chainsaw Sally. He's another one. Just like, just you, the art is just kind of like it beams off of them. And he is most certainly another one. Um, and that that's kind of the difference. And you could work with um, people who do product and um, uh, appreciate what they're doing and, you know, the work they're giving everybody. But it's a very different experience from somebody's movie that then gets sold versus, you know, they've got this product and it needs to be delivered in, you know, six weeks. So, yeah, mm. that's awesome. So with that said, you just recently finished a movie uh, not too long ago or finished a shoot and then you got some other projects in the works. Yeah. Aside from American Expendables, which you're a producer on and you're also involved, you know, to a mm. capacity, are there any other projects that you can talk about that are that we can expect from you this year? Right. Well, um, I'm pretty when I say this year, it's like everything <clears throat> seems as though this year, right? <laughs> because <laughs> but you never know, as we know. Right. Uh, in the process of either um, the post or the process of uh, getting it out there in this new crazy streaming world mm -hmm. where really only things that are boutique get released physically anymore, which is also strange to me. I mean, I like the, the boutique aspect, you know, the, the slip cover. I love all that stuff. You know, yeah. it's like the B movie or the indie movie version of Criterium. Um, but uh, yeah, what can I mention? Um, a view from the edge, um, Michael Lippert, uh, we shot that in Ontario and that is really a fun horror movie. Won't give anything away, but 
that is in the process of uh, going into post and then he's going to put it in some festivals and that's a, a feature length. Um, I just wrapped a movie with Joe Hollow um, and that is Blush of the Unforgiven. Pretty sure he's going to keep that title. We'll we'll see about that. And that is just like fresh into post. But he does his own editing. Um, he's one of those guys. He doesn't shoot it himself. He writes it, um, and then he also edits it. And he's you know done that sort of thing for a living. So he is not a slow post guy. Whereas you know right. if you're a typical guy, you're sort of like hoping that your post guy will have time in between his higher paying gigs to get yours done. But yeah. it's this not the case. So I think this is going to be a little <laughs> bit more fast tracked, if you will. Really original. Oh my god, original script good, good stuff. Um, a, another one um, that I can't mention yet because they have to announce it, right. but it is uh, via, we'll go like that, via GR Bookwalter, and then it's down sort of a rabbit hole there, but announce that soon when they, when they, um, when they do, do announce that. Uh, but um, yeah, a few G, a few other things that are in the works, like two or three projects, like we talked to briefly about Lloyd's, and then right. there's a couple of other ones as well that are coming up. So the fall will be busy because each of them, ironically, they're kind of like, um, well, Lloyd is always a month, you know, yeah. and just really just enjoying spending that much time on a set is a fantasy because quite often you'll get called and you'll do, and, and of course there's the ongoing project. I would be very remiss not to mention uh, segments of Jonah, which is this really epic sci-fi movie that I've been doing. I've been down twice shooting with Tom, the director, um, and he is another one. He's a he's a genius. He's one of these guys. He's like truly a genius because his ability to create worlds and the sets that he has built by hand blows my mind. Like, you know, you would normally need a 30 person crew to get, you know, this sort of stuff done. And he just any he, and he edits and he does it all. And he's just like one of these in a good way, mad geniuses. And so like, I'm very excited about that. Lynn, excuse me. Lynn Lowry is in that as well. Uh, so segments of Jonah that's, you know, but that's ongoing. There's still some shooting that needs to get done. So we'll get that yeah. done now by, by fall. And, and so, yeah, we have a lot of things kind of churning its way out. Awesome. Different, well, different, different stages of uh, ready. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, you are a powerhouse and you are still, the fact that you're still going after all these years, is just mind blowing. And you deserve it's every accolade. Going. You deserve every accolade you've gotten, especially where you got your start and everything. I think yeah. you came a long way ahead and you just keep going. You just keep belting them out. That's all I got to tell you. No. Well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. There's there has been like when I had the accident with the hand on a set or other things when I had, you know, the it was non malignant. So, you know, so many people messaged me, oh, my God, brain cancer. No, non malignant tumor that I was dealing with for a long time. So, I mean, I was fine, but, you know, I'd go through whether it be radiation or operation on this, that the other thing. Um so, yeah, I mean, there's been segments that have been really, you know, have taken a pretty hard toll on me. Um, and I would say the hand accident the, the most because it wasn't just that it kind of permanently disabled my hand to a certain degree. Um, it was also that all of those years of studying and being on, on sets and feeling like I'm in my safe space, that was taken away for years. And to build that back was one of the greatest efforts I've ever had to overcome. Uh, but yeah, and I say that because, you know, it's been such a road and I'm acknowledging the fact that you're saying something very nice to me and how much it means to me because the road is very you know rocky 
I mean, you wouldn't enjoy the the great stuff if it wasn't, you know, right. so that's the good stuff. That's the good news. And I do appreciate um, all of the good stuff. So, and you are one of them. So thank you. Thanks for making this year special for me. I appreciate that. Well, it's my absolute pleasure. And once again, congratulations on joining the world from Geek Hall of Fame. You totally thank deserve you. it. Thank you. Awesome. So, so everyone check out worldfilmgeek.com for reviews interviews features and more check out this interview at the exclusive world film geek youtube channel it's going to be up tomorrow and oh yeah i, I did pretty quick That's so i'm pretty good with that fast <laughs> awesome yep. and also check us out everywhere and um once again debbie thank you so much for taking the time to talk about your amazing career and i'm so glad that you're still going and i cannot wait to see more of your stuff right on thank you so much thanks for having me well, I got two words for everyone. You all stay awesome and you have a good day.